Now that the World Health Organization has called the coronavirus outbreak a pandemic, there is a much more intense conversation going on about how to avoid catching and spreading the illness. So what happens if you ride a train or a bus or a taxi or get in a ride share to get to work every day? Are you worried that everyone around you might be carrying COVID-19? Are you getting a little OCD? Let's bring back friend of the show and clinical psychologist, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Doc, welcome back. Good to see you. Great to see you, Bill. All right, Doc, right off the top, do you think that this is going to create a whole new generation of people with OCD? I think certainly uh, what we're seeing now, uh, people are trying to keep the panic down, so that's a good thing, but it does feed into their obsessive compulsive uh, nature that many of us do have, even if we don't have the OCD type of disorder. And I think uh, it's also heightening people's uh, hypochondriasis, the fear of getting this thing, um, even if they're not exposed to it within their own knowledge or their own behavior. Do you think with, if you, let's talk about the commute, right? So you, you get into a, an Uber ride, you have no idea who just got out of the car before you. Do you think that with all the pressure on, hey, keep your hands clean, wash your hands, you go back a few years, people talked about OCD, washing their hands way too much. Now you're swinging the other way. Uh, do you think it's gonna create that anxiety with people carrying hand sanitizer because they're afraid to touch the cushion or the door handle? getting into a car. Well, with what we know about COVID-19 right now, it's not such a bad idea to uh, use precaution as much as they can. I know some people are getting chapped hands from uh, using too much hand sanitizer yeah. or washing their hands too much. But if you look at the alternative, which is feeling that they are absolutely powerless, I'll take uh, a little bit of that being overly too cautious. And I think in time uh, that we will start drifting back more towards the norm, but we definitely have gone uh, over to the other side, if not yeah. over the edge with this. And it's, you know, it's not- It's interesting you say that, Doc, because some, some doctors are now saying, be careful with the hand sanitizer. If you overuse it, you're literally hurting the best defense you have, which is your own skin. That said, let's talk about subway systems and buses across the country. Uh, you've got millions and millions of people who that's how they get to work and they're crowded into these tight spaces, right? The strap hangers, how many people are touching that, um, you know, in a, in a course of one commute? Well, so here's the thing, right? We see that subway uh, ridership. Uh, I know I take the Metro North. It seems like there are less people that are riding. And I think sometimes we have to take some pride in that we are still moving on with our lives. We practice the precautions. We have some social distancing. Maybe you shouldn't get on a subway car that is packed, especially if it's going to feed into your hypochondriasis or your fears because you don't know everything about the COVID-19 uh, uh, issue right now. But I think we have to try to continue to go on with our lives, but take the precautions. Yeah. I, I think you're right. And of course, it depends on how you define precaution, right? I walked in to the office earlier today and somebody did this. They offered their elbow. I said, what, what is that? Are you attacking me? I don't know if we're going to either shake hands or don't do anything. Just a nod, maybe. It looks weird. Well, again, the scientists are telling us to keep that social distance for now. This is something that hopefully will just be temporary. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then in another year, we'll have another virus to deal with. But <laughs> yeah. right now, yeah, right. people right. are on edge. Let's be supportive of them. Let's be supportive of one another. And together, we yeah. will get through this. Anxiety is a part of life. You know, you, you really hit the nail on the head there, Doc. I mean, for me, I'm still shaking hands. I, you know, I feel like as long as you don't have symptoms, I'm not worried about it. But that said, because there are higher risk groups, obviously. Uh, but that said, think about the flu every year, right? We hear this over and over again, the comparisons. And, you know, when, when the dust settles on coronavirus, you've still got tens of thousands of people in America who die every year of the flu. Well, Bill, here is, if there is a positive aspect to this, the, 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 the biggest positive I see is that we're learning habits now, even if we're going, you know, to the extreme, but are learning habits about good hygiene that will help us yeah. deal with not just COVID-19, but all of the other germs and bacteria and viruses that are out there. The thing we have to be careful of is not to become too antiseptic because that in itself, as you brought up, 
may be an issue in the future. When I was a kid, they used to feed us dirt in order to bring up our immune system. You know, that's funny you say that. They say that the kids uh, who grow up on farms are healthier than the rest of us, mainly because of the dirt they're eating. Thanks, Doc. Great to talk to you. Natural defenses. <laughs> that's, that's right.